Hi there folks, my name is Carl Lauchs with Pape Machinery. I'm a product specialist and today we're going to do a Monchero clinic on how to set up your harvester for nut harvest. Uh, we're fast approaching nut harvest uh, this season and we want to make sure that you folks get information on how to do the basics and setting up your machine before harvest begins. But first I want to talk about the, a couple different models that we have. So in 2015 we introduced the Evolution. Um, the 2125 Evolution was the first machine that we brought in. Um, also that year we brought in the 2095. The 2095 is a smaller machine um, that we have. We've sold several of those as well. And then in 2018 uh, Monchero introduced the Ferox. Uh, the Ferox is a little, a little bit different on the cab. It's a glass cab versus a plexiglass cab that we had on the Evolution. But setting up the two machines is almost identical. And I'll walk through that with you folks here today. Okay, folks, so one of the unique things about the Monchero Harvester is that we are a one-pass operation. So when I say one-pass, that means we're sweeping and harvesting in, in one single pass through the orchard. Uh, we don't have to run a sweeper through to make a windrow. So we're actually picking up the nuts on the, on the orchard floor. So one thing that contributes to that are these brushes. Uh, we've got a small one on the left and this is what we call the tree brush. This brush runs against the tree row. That's why it's a larger brush than the left one. Um, and the unique thing about these brushes is that we've got these rubber paddles uh, the rubber paddles bring the nuts in, and I know some of you have asked about having a bristle brush out here. Um, I'll explain to you why we don't put a bristle brush out here, because uh, some of you have bristle brushes on your, your sweepers that you have today. Uh, the problem with the bristle brush is, is that it brings in too much dirt, because those bristles are stabbing the soil as you're moving forward, and they're actually loosening the ground, and then that brings all that dirt into that windrow. If you look at the windrow that you make with a standard sweeper, there's a lot of dirt in it. And the object with this machine is not to bring the dirt into the machine. So we have a separation problem as we get back towards the back. So that's why we use these rubber paddles. So um, to set this machine up to do a really nice job, um, these, are, these rotate counterclockwise. We want the paddle to touch out here at between four o'clock and three o'clock. And then we want to release about 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock on the inside of the opening. Uh, we can adjust the width of this uh, with a bolt back here. I'll show that to you here in a minute. Um, but to set the angles of these, there's a set of 19 millimeter uh, bolts here that you can loosen to adjust the head left and right. And then we have a turnbuckle here that we can tilt the angle of the head as well. Underneath the head is a, what we call a mushroom and it's a round plate that runs on the ground. So this mushroom is also adjustable in height. So depending upon how high that mushroom is set, that determines how hard the bristles are on the ground. So in dry conditions, when we don't have wet conditions, you want these to be fairly light. You want, right now they're set a little bit on the aggressive side, if you can see these rubber, rubber fingers. Um, if we're in wet conditions, you want them to be more aggressive because we got to dig that nut out of the ground after the rain pounds it in the ground. So we're going to be more aggressive with the brushes in wet conditions, and we're going to be less aggressive with the brushes in dry conditions. That way we don't sweep as much dirt into the machine. So there's some basic settings. We can also change the speed of these brushes as well uh, from inside the cab. And uh, depending upon the rotation speed, the RPMs of these, Depends upon how far we throw the nuts into the center of the machine before, so it picks the nut up. Um, if you run them too fast, you'll pitch the nuts too far and then they'll go past out into the other row and we won't get them into the machine. So the, the, the RPMs of this rotor is also very important. So anyway, that's critical that we don't pick up as much dirt as we can. We'll keep the dirt to a minimum. So another adjustment I wanna talk about on the tree brush is uh, the tension. So these springs that we have here, we can adjust these eye bolts to make the head float more. So depending upon the soil conditions, if we're in soft, soft soil, we can make the head lighter. If we're in a turf situation where we have a lot of turf, we can make the tension heavier. And that's by adjusting these springs. The other adjustment is right in here. This is what we call a limiter bolt. So if you bring the mushroom up in a, in a, in a high position, 
um, this limiter bolt will hit and then you can't get the head to go all the way on the ground. So don't forget about this. You may need to back this adjuster bolt off in order to get the head to settle on the ground. The other instance where you'll see that is if you're going through a ravine and the, and the brushes don't want to stay on the ground, it's because this limiter bolt is too far out and you'll want to bring that back a little bit so that the head will stay on the ground. The other adjustment for our width, which I talked about earlier, is this one right here. So as this head swings out, this limiter bolt will limit how far the head swings. So if you want to do a very wide, wide cut, then you'll adjust this bolt out. And there's one on each side, this side, and then the small brush on the other side, there's a limiter bolt here uh, that keep the actuator from going all the way. Now that we've got the nuts into the machine from the, from the sweepers, now we need to pick it up with the, the, the pickup reel. So underneath this area is a 36 inch reel, which is very large. This reel has a ton of capacity. So we can process a lot of material from leaves, sticks, uh, various debris, plus all the nuts that we bring up into the chain. So one critical thing is this orange bulkhead door. This orange bulkhead door from, from the joystick is adjustable down and back. So, and how we adjust that is depending upon the leaf load, you're gonna have this door most likely closed all the way because the tighter this door is, the better the reel will pick up the nuts. So when we get later in the season and we do the second and third pick, we have more debris, more leaves and, and different things on the orchard floor. Then we're gonna start opening this door up to allow that material to come in. But in a young orchard, for example, where we don't have many nuts, this door is gonna be down all the way. And that creates a seal where the pickup fingers come around and bring the nuts up and throw them onto the chain. So this is a real critical thing. It's, quite, it's something that people quite often forget about when they're throwing nuts out the front. Um, they forget that this, this door is up and it needs to be down in a thinner conditions. The other thing is our head height. So we just, in this reel, we have a set of rubber fingers and every other set is longer than the other. So the shorter ones, which are a heavier material, those are gonna be right on the orchard floor when we're picking. The second set right behind it is a thinner piece of rubber and they're just about a quarter of an inch longer. So they're actually sweeping across the dirt, but they're thinner so they don't pick up as much dirt. So to set that height, I'll show you folks here in a little bit, once we lift the machine up, how to set the height of the head. But that's a critical measurement in, uh, in the height of those fingers off of the floor. Now we're gonna talk about dry conditions and wet conditions, and then the folks that have sod, that plant turf between their trees. So in dry conditions, we're gonna have a pretty light touch with these fingers. Wet conditions or an uneven orchard that hasn't been leveled real good, we're gonna have the head down tighter to the ground to help pick those nuts up out of the grooves. And also, if we have a turf situation where we're picking up on turf, we're gonna have the head down a little bit further because we have to rake those nuts out of the sod and the turf that's between the, the tree rows. So there's some fine tuning that you have to do with the height of this head to make it pick real super clean. And that's uh, depending upon the conditions that we're in. The other thing is we've got these black shoes and these black shoes float. And you ask yourself, why are those there? What they do is they keep the nuts contained inside of the head so they don't escape out the side. So once in a while, if we're in muddy conditions, uh, these shoes will stick in an up position and you just gotta be aware of that um, and clean those once in a while to keep the, the mud out of them so that they stay down on the ground and they float. So that's how you, you keep those black shoes on the ground. Now that we have the head adjusted, and we're, we're picking up nuts properly. Now the nuts are gonna come off of the bulkhead door in a reverse rotation onto the chain. So once we throw the nuts onto the chain, then we start separating some of the finer material like the dirt. An important thing is, and you'll notice this in a young orchard versus a mature orchard, is the, the, the consistency of the nuts across the chain. The more uniform we can keep the nuts from the, from the left side to the right side, the better the cleaning fans in the back will do. So. In a young orchard, you can't help. You're always gonna have a heavy side, which is gonna be this side. But fortunately, typically in a young orchard, the nuts aren't real heavy on the ground, so it's a thinner load on this side. But the more uniform we can keep the load on the chain, the better the cleaning fans work in the back. 
The other unique thing about this chain is it has clean out doors. And I'll show you those here, uh, folks. And those clean out doors allow the material to go out of the chain when the chain goes over in the reverse rotation and comes down the bottom trough. That allows the material to come out of the chain. And you'll see that material come out here in, in front of the front tire. And it's all dirt, debris, small sticks, and things like that. Okay, folks, now that we're picking and harvesting nuts, now what we have to do is we have to clean up around the base of the tree. So if this is the tree row right here, and we have a tree, then the brush sweeps on the, the machine side of the tree, but we still have nuts around the base of the tree that we have to clean up. The tree fan accomplishes that by blowing a tremendous amount of air out of this chute to blow the, the nuts away from the base of the tree into the next row. Once it blows them into the next row, you're gonna pick them on the next pass as you come through the next row. Um, one thing that we have done here at Pap A is we, we have built an aluminum chute to extend this uh, fan discharge out closer to the tree. It makes it more effective. Uh, we clean a lot better around the base of the tree. The other thing we did is we designed into this chute a couple of deflectors so that we blow behind the tree and we blow in front of the tree. So we're actually deflecting the air behind and in front of the tree so that we clean on both sides. <laughs> this is adjustable right here with this uh, cable so that you can lift it up and down so it's, it's tight to the ground. So the closer this is to the ground, the better it cleans uh, the ground around the base of the tree. The fan speed is adjustable inside the cab. We can go at a lower speed or a higher speed. Typically, this fan is running wide open um, to, to do a good job of cleaning around the base of the tree. The only time we'll turn it down is in a young orchard when the trees are real small. Okay, I know a lot of you uh, folks uh, haul these machines around. Um, there is a couple tie points on here when you tie it to a low boy or a trailer. This is one of them for the front of the machine. Uh, this is a pretty sturdy hook. So you'll hook a chain here and pull forward. The second tie down is this one right here. This loophole is to tie the machine to the back. So when you're hauling the machine, you've got two tie points, one here and you've got one up here. Now that we have the picking head in the up position, I'd like to show you guys the, uh, to, the two cleaning fans. So we have a left one and a right one. These cleaning fans are adjustable inside the cab. Aaron's gonna show you that in a, in a little bit here, how to make those adjustments on these cleaning fans. These cleaning fans um, actually act as a shear fan. Um, in the back of the machine, I'll show you in a few minutes uh, how that shear effect works as the nuts waterfall off the chain. But that's kind of how these fans work and they clean. Another important thing on these fans is a clean out door. There's a little door at the bottom of the fan. And because the way the nuts fall, if we're in a rocky situation where we have a lot of little small rocks and gravel, sometimes those rocks will get in the bottom of that fan and it will plug that fan housing. So if you're in a rocky condition, you'll want to clean that out about every four or five hours. Just open those doors and clean the rocks out, close the door back up, and then you're off and running again. Okay, so now I showed you where the fans were underneath the, the chain. So the fan discharge is right as it comes out the bottom of the chain here. There's two, there's two spouts that, that funnel the air from the fans out over the chain. And the way we clean with the Monchero is the nuts waterfall off of this chain. They free fall before they hit the sieve. And in that free fall, that's when they, they get interrupted by the airstream. So the adjustment of that fan is based on the amount of weight of the material that's water falling over the chain. So a nut is heavier than a leaf. A stick is the same weight as a nut. So quite often we will have a stick go in the bin, but I'll show you here in a little bit the green belt that actually grabs the stick and helps take the sticks out. But the, the speed of that fan determines whether we blow nuts over the back or the nuts go down onto the shaker table. So once the, the nuts are cleaned and they fall onto the shaker table, the shaker table vibrates all the small material like the dirt off. And once they, they roll down the shaker the table, then they, the discharge beater, as this paddle comes around, it paddles them into the bin. The shaker table is adjustable by a hydraulic motor right here. There's a set screw that we can change the speed of the shake. And we can also change the speed of this discharge beater on how far the nuts go into the back of the bin. We can actually throw them back there hard enough, we can break them against the back of the bin. So we gotta be careful the speed of this uh, discharge beater. Over on the left side of the shaker table, right above it about 10 inches is a camera. And that little camera we can see inside the cab. There's actually three cameras. There's one on the back of the bin for backing up. There's one over here on the tree fan. And there's one on this uh, shaker table. When you're harvesting, I like to have this camera on up in the cab 
and I watch the amount of nuts that are flowing across the shaker table. Um, and that determines my forward speed. So if I see a tremendous amount of nuts coming onto the shaker table, I'll actually slow my forward speed down so I don't over flood this table. Um, as long as this table's got good flow and I'm watching it through the camera as the nuts waterfall onto here, then that helps me determine how fast I can travel in my forward speed. Okay, a lot of you folks ask how high will this dump and what size of a truck can I dump into? The height from the bottom of that door to the ground is basically nine foot, 10 inches. So we tell everyone you can dump into a 10 foot rack on a truck. Um, you can also put two boxes together and dump into two boxes with this as well that are on a flatbed of a truck. Okay, another companion product that we have for the Monchero Nut Harvester is this Hillco Nut Cart. Um, this nut cart we designed and built a couple years ago. We've sold many of these already uh, to folks that own the Moncheros. This makes it fast and quick and easy to unload the machine at the end of the row. Uh, the nut cart will dump at 14 feet, so it will dump into a very large semi. Um, we also have a kit available for it with a diverter. The diverter diverts the nuts into two, in, two individual wooden boxes. Um, that kit is available for this as well in case you're dumping into wooden boxes on a flatbed of a truck. Uh, but this is a great product to, to unload the machine quickly and, and get back in the field and pick nuts. It's another a unique uh, feature of this cleaning system as the nuts come up this chain. And as we talked about, they waterfall in across the, the air. Any sticks that are 12 inches or longer are gonna get caught on this green belt and this green belt will grab those sticks and discharge them out the back before they go in. We'll always get some little short sticks in there, but typically anything 12 inches or bigger, the green belt will catch it and carry it out the back. Okay, the drive system on the Monchero machine is a hydrostatic system, so it's an infinitely variable forward and then also in reverse. It is also four-wheel drive, a full-time four-wheel drive all the time. Uh, the other unique thing about the machine is it, it has three forms of steering. So we have two wheel steer, which is in the front. We have four wheel steer, which all four tires will steer. And then we have crab steer where we can steer the, the two sets, the front and the rear independent of each other to help us stay on side hills. And that's what the crab steer will do for us. In four wheel steer, it's very, very tight. It'll turn very tight on a tight head row. Two wheel steer is definitely more for road travel. In fact, you have to be in two wheel steer to go from first gear to second gear. Okay, another unique feature that we have is that the cab will side shift. So the position I'm in now is centered and typically we'll travel down the highway in this position. And remember the tree brush is on that side, so I don't want the cab underneath the tree row. So what I can do is side shift the cab like this and move myself away from that tree row. And this is about 23 inches of side shift from the, from the center to the left position. And the reason is now my cab is away from the tree uh, as far as I can be, and my brush is underneath the tree. Okay, folks, that concludes the basic setup of the Monchero for harvesting. If you have any questions during the season on how to set the machine up in the orchard, you're welcome to contact any of your local territory managers. Um, any one of them can help you do that. So now I want to introduce Aaron Hyatt. He's going to go inside the cab and go through the controls of the joystick and the monitor and the, and the side dash. Hey there, I'm Aaron Hyatt, Territory Manager for Pape Machinery. Today I'm going to take you into the cab of a Monkeyero Ferox and go over a few important features and adjustments. All right, this morning we're going to start out with showing you some of the features and the modes on the screen of our Monkeyero Ferox. First, we have the number one button, which is your RPMs. To change your RPMs in this machine, you'd hit the button, number one, and then down here you would use the up or down arrow to get to the RPMs you, you want to run at. I recommend running the machine at 19 to 2100 RPMs based on your conditions, higher RPMs for heavier conditions. Once you've set the RPMs, you have to hit OK for it to save, and then that will be your default RPM when you are in harvest mode. The next button is the propulsion button, number two. It's set right now with the joystick on the screen, meaning you're forward and reverse control of the machine is controlled by the proportional joystick here. If you prefer to control it with the foot pedal, press the button, number two, okay, and then you can use the foot pedal to move the machine, forward or reverse. One note on that, when you 
switch this machine to road mode, you will have to be in the pedal control. It will not let you go up to road speeds using the joystick. Across the top, you have the date and the time. You have your mode, which is either going to be idle, working, or road mode. There's different indicators for that. And then you have your forward and reverse indicator, which is a joystick, or which is a switch, a rocker switch down below. Neutral, reverse, neutral, forward. The indicator on this side is your steering alignment. Um, with the engine running, when you steer, the position of the tires will change. If you have two red arrows, it means both axles are out of alignment. When those arrows turn green, it means that you are in alignment. Number five is our cleaning fan or shear fan. It's located at the back of the machine. It blows the air between the chain and the green belt to knock the leaves and the sticks out before the nuts drop into the sieve. In order to change the speed on that, we press the number five and then we use the up and down arrows to control that. Early in the season, we run these as low as 50% so that we're retaining all of the nuts and the leaf load is usually lighter. Press the OK button and then you're set. Number six is the tree fan. This is the fan located on the right side of the machine that blows the ground and blows the nuts away from the trees. Same thing, press the button, use the up and down arrows to adjust that. That's almost always at 100% in the conditions we work in. Press OK to set it. Number seven is your brushes. You have had a brush on each side in the front of you. Um, the right side goes up against the tree. The left side can be used to go past your center line or it can be retracted up in the air and, and not used at all. Same way to set the speed. You use your up and down arrows. Plus press OK when you get there. The eighth button is your cleaning system in the back. It's the chain and the belt and your pickup header speed. 80% is a pretty typical number to see on that. Same process as the rest. Use your up and down buttons and then press OK. Below we have a couple of more gauges we can look at. We have the hopper level indicator. We have your voltage meter here. Above that we have oil pressure, engine oil pressure. And to the side we have charge oil pressure for your hydraulic system and temperature. To go to screen two, use the right arrow next to the OK button. Right. On screen number two, <clears throat> the first button we have is the presets. If you press number one, you'll notice that you have three settings, one or zero, one and two. If you like the presets that you put in the last screen, you can set it to zero and press OK. Then you're set up for the field conditions for that day. If you have a second set of presets you'd like to use, use the left arrow key to go back to this screen you can change your RPMs, your fan speeds, and your brush speeds, and the cleaning system speeds. Once you've done that, toggle back over to page two, hit your presets again, and move over to the next one, number one. Now you've got two saved. You can do that for up to three presets. The number two button is the eco mode. With eco mode off, the engine RPMs will always stay where you've set them. With it on, when you're not harvesting or moving at full speed, it will bring the RPMs back down. Number three button is your load meter and your gallons per hour for your fuel. The load meter might come in handy uh, if you're having observable symptoms, um, hydraulic problems, maybe your technician would ask you what that reading is to help you diagnose what the problem is. The number four button is your heating and air conditioning controls. Press number four and you can see that you have a fan display that's just to change your fan speed. Number two, you have the temperature control. And then number three, you have an option for auto and manual. It will try in auto mode, it will keep the fan and the temperature at a comfortable combination. These buttons work the same as the rest. Press the button, use the up and down arrow to change the value. Press OK, and you'll go back to the next screen and everything will be set. On the, on the right side of the machine, you have your reversing radiator indicator. With the engine running, we could go in there and make this thing reverse by pushing and holding the button. Otherwise, it'll just indicate when, the, when it's running in reverse to purge versus when it's running in the normal position. Number six is your hour totals. On this side of the screen, you'll see your idle time your working time, and your road time. 
and complete totals on the right side. On the number seven button, you have your surface area counter or acreage meter, if you will. In order to make sure that you're accurate, you'll need to measure your harvesting width after you've determined where you're gonna set your right and left breast during harvesting. Once you've taken the measurement, you can highlight it by pressing the number four and change it to the measurement that you've determined. Press OK, and then OK again, and it'll go back to the next screen. That's about all we have on screen number two. All right, the next screen, screen three, requires you to be in neutral before you go there. So you'll want to look at your indicator up here and make sure you're not in forward or reverse. As you see, it won't go in, into the third screen. Go to neutral, press the right arrow. We have a few things we can do here. You can see on number three, you can change the language. Basically, it's going to be changing your measurement readings from imperial to metric to standard. Um, press that and oh, use the right and left arrows to select which one you'd like and then press OK. Number five is your end of line functions. There's several different things on the end of line function. You can set the seconds that it takes for your brushes to come up, your header to come up, your header to go down, your belt and cleaning system to spool down, how long your brushes stroke out, your RPMs, and you can change how your harvest starts and stops. It's currently set to start harvest and finish harvest on the red button. Meaning when you go into the row, you hit the red button, you complete your harvest of that row. When you get to the end, you hit it again, and all of these functions engage. So your header comes up, your cleaning system stops, your, your uh, brushes come up, and you're ready to make your turn and go into the next row by hitting the red button again. If you like to use two different buttons, you can hit the number eight, and it will take you to end of line green and stop red. Basically the same thing, but green would start your function for harvest and red would stop it. Those are the things that we can change in that screen. In number six, in this screen, you can hit the number one button to change the seconds that your fan stays on. Right now it's at 15 seconds. We can set it all the way up to 30, I believe. Press OK. The auto reverse for your fan is set to purge every 12 minutes right now. That also can be changed. In dustier conditions, I'd recommend taking it down to the eight minute mark, sometimes even the four minute mark in the worst conditions. The number seven button. In here, we can change the way your joystick and your foot pedal respond to your inputs. All right, number one, you can see it reads 5%. What number one indicates is a 5% dead band in the joystick control. So you can move this 5% before you get any movement out of the machine. If you would like it to be less responsive and take more movement, you can press the number one button and then increase the amount of time or the percentage, thus increasing the dead band. I would recommend leaving it at 5%. Number two and three are adjusting how quickly the hydraulics respond to your joystick movement in forward and reverse. Number two being forward, number three being reverse. Number five and number six are the same thing that I described for two and three. You're just adjusting the sensitivity for your proportion on the foot pedal. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Number five, we've hit that. We use an up and down arrows to increase or decrease. If you decrease on this, you're going to make your response to engaging forward slower. If you increase, you're going to make it more abrupt. Number seven and eight are the same thing for the foot pedal, but they're for road mode specifically. If you look up here, we have the ramps lit up mostly green for more responsiveness in the field. On the road, we like these to be set very low because you're going at a higher speed and it's just safer for you and the machine, more comfortable to drive. The last thing we have on the third screen is your 
level indicator, your bin level indicator. Right now, if you look at the button number one, it's set at 75%. That means when you're in screen one, it is gonna read full at about the 75% mark based off the sonar signal that's sent in there. That's where most people run it. Maybe 80% is where I would run it. So that concludes the screen portion of the training. All right, so let's go over the joystick handle and what functions we have on it. I'm gonna start off with the four functions that will come up on the screen and give you indicators and help if you forgot what they do. Starting with the orange button, we press it and we can see on the screen here that it's for your left brush movement. Pushing the button and pulling back, we'll lift the left brush up, forward, we'll put it down, left, we'll swing it out, and right, we'll swing it back to its stored position. If we move to the blue button, this is the same thing, but for the right brush. Same pictorial, only it indicates in words and by the bar location that we're on the right, and the same functions. Pull back to lift it up, go forward to drop it, left to retract it, right to extend it. Moving down, we have the black button. This is your hopper movement. Hold the button and pull back to lift the hopper. I like to lift the hopper until it's fully extended and then move the joystick to the right to dump. Once it's dumped, you can move all the way to the left to bring it back. And once it's cleared a certain position, you can start pulling back and left at the same time to speed up your, your retraction process. Once it's stored, let go. The next button that will pop up a pictorial is the gray button all the way to the right. This has two functions. You'll notice it says cockpit on either side. This is to side shift the cab one direction or the other. Right for right, left for left. Using the forward, same button and forward or backwards will move your bulkhead door. That's the orange door that sits under the cab. You're gonna move this door open, which is back under heavier leaf loads and conditions that require more material going into the header. So the next button we're gonna talk about is the yellow button. This is for your tree fan. You will hit the tree fan button anytime you want it on, which depends on how you've laid your, your harvest out. And sometimes you'll blow every row, sometimes you will not. But remember, you need to turn this off and on. It doesn't come on automatically with your end of harvest functions. Next, we're gonna talk about the green button. I like to set the machine up to start harvest with the green button, meaning when I press this, the RPMs are gonna come up, all of my fans are going to go to the right speed, my brushes are gonna go where I've preset them for, the cab's gonna come down, and we're gonna engage the harvest row and carry on. At the end of the row, I would move to the red button, hit that, and it will start my shutdown process so that I can exit the row with everything in the proper position. That concludes everything we need to talk about on the joystick. Okay, so we're gonna go over the couple of side buttons we have here in the console. They're relatively simple. The first one with the forward and reverse arrow is your forward neutral reverse switch. Uh, formerly that was on the steering column as a lever. So left for reverse, center for neutral, right for forward. It'll indicate where you're at on the screen. Button number two is your steering mode. All the way to the left is two wheel steer. In the middle is four wheel steer. All the way to the right is crab steering to get you out of those tight spots or help you out with slippage on the hills. Next, we have the park brake switch. All the way to the left is park brake engaged. To the right, disengaged. The next button we have here is the up and down for the folding ladder outside the cab. You can control that by pushing to the right to come up and the left to go down. The next one that we have to look at is the turtle and rabbit. This is for your road or harvest mode. In turtle, you're in harvest speeds. In rabbit, that's where you can gain some ground speed for highway mode or road mode as we also refer to it. Remember that when you go to road mode, you will need to be in two wheel steer and you'll also need to change to the foot pedal for your means of propulsion. Here we have a uh, diagnostic switch that would be used by a technician when he's in one of the diagnostic screens. The next one we have is for regen. If you're in the middle of harvest and need to cancel an engine regeneration, 
you would rock this to the left. If you're in a situation where you need to do a parked regen, you would follow the instructions on the screen and push and hold this when it tells you to. The last button we have here is the hazard switch. Rock them to the right and your hazards are on front and rear. Please use those anytime you're in road mode. And that's that for the switches. Okay, now I'm gonna pass this off to Chris Peisker to go over some maintenance items. Hello, I'm Chris Peisker with Pape Machinery. I'm the CSR for the North Willamette region. And today we're gonna to be talking about maintenance items on the Monchero Ferrox machine. So we're gonna start on the left side of the machine. Some things you need to check on a daily basis before you operate the machine um, is gonna be, we're gonna start with the air filter. And to check the air filter is you pop the, the tabs off, lift it, the cover off, and pull the air filter out. And there's two things you can do. You can either tap this air filter on the ground to knock the dust out of it, or you can lightly blow the dust off of it. You never want to remove the inner air filter unless you're changing it. The other important thing to look at when you're looking at your air filter is the clamps for the air intake tube. And you're gonna to wanna to check the clamps on the top and you're gonna to wanna to follow the pipe down to under the engine and check the clamps down on the engine. We also wanna point out the updated pre-cleaner for the Monchero, which turns the pre-cleaner vertical so that you get a longer life out of your air filter, does a better job cleaning the air before it reaches the air filter. It's about a $100 option. So now we're gonna lift up the picking head to show you the clamps for the air intake towards the engine. So here is the air intake pipe that goes down to the engine. And you can see this white hose and the, this hose is clamped to the pipe and it's also clamped to the engine. And those clamps are very important to check on a daily basis just to make sure they're tight and they're secured. The hose is, will, is flexible and just check the hose and make sure there's no rub marks or, or um, any holes in the hose. You're also gonna be checking the radiator while you're here and checking the coolant level and checking the debris and making sure there's no debris buildup on the radiator. The radiator does have a reversing fan that you can change the time in the cab for how long you want it to reverse and blow the dust and, and stuff out of it um, and then go back to normal operation. It's automatic, but it is adjustable from the cab on times. The other thing you wanna make sure in dry, dusty conditions, we wanna make sure we got no dust and dirt buildup in the engine compartment. Very important to keep that engine compartment clean. In very dusty conditions, you might have to blow that off twice a day. In orchards that have uh, a grass floor, will collect grass around the engine. So you have to blow that off and make sure that you don't get any buildup under the engine for that. You're also checking, just looking at your hoses. Make sure you're not rubbing any hoses. This is your hydraulic valve and all your electrical. Just keep fairly clean, no buildup of uh, piles of dirt or anything along that lines. Here we are at the front of the machine, and this is where your air conditioning unit is. And under this door is your cab filter. And you'd lift this door, pull the nuts off, and you can pop the filter out for cleaning or checking. Make sure this area stays clean Otherwise your air conditioner will start to have problems. So here we are on the right side of the machine. The machine is still in the up position so that we can look at the right side of the motor. Here's where you would check your engine oil and your filters. You've got two fuel filters to look at and make sure there's a water separator on the bottom filter. 
your engine oil filter and all your electrical, your alternator are on this side of the engine. And again, you want to check to make sure you don't have no debris buildup or dirt buildup in there. While you're on this side of the, the uh, machine with the, the head up, you also want to check the tree fan and make sure that you don't have any debris built up in the fins of the tree fan that could throw it off a of balance. It's important to keep that thing clean. Uh, a little bit of dirt or built up on it will cause it to be out of balance. So you want to look at that area really close. Uh, here are your hydraulic oil filters. Um, just a visual look at those a daily would be good. So we're still on the right side of the machine, but now we have lowered the machine down so that we can check our hydraulic oil level. It should be between the minimum and maximum, not over the maximum, somewhere in between these. We use Hydra XR hydraulic oil and the Monchero specifically to fill the machine or to add oil comes with a special pump you plug on to here keep any dirt and debris the system is sealed so you've got no dirt and debris getting into the hydraulic system at all also on the hydraulic tank there's a breather back here behind this cover and it collects moisture so that you don't get moisture in your hydraulic system when the, the beads in this filter change color, it's time to change this filter. It's also very important not to overfill this system. If you overfill this system, when it gets hot, it will puke oil out of the breather. So trying to keep it down towards the minimum is better than trying to keep it up towards the maximum. Another maintenance item you want to check on a daily basis is your chain tension. And you can look at both sides of the machine. There's a hole here, and there should be a half inch gap between the hole and the top of the chain. To keep this chain tensioned so that it doesn't slip. The other thing you would want to check while you're in this area is you want to gander down at the, the reel and make sure you don't have no debris stuck in your pickup fingers, sticks, um, things like that, wire, whatever you might pick up. So if your chain is loose, you're gonna adjust the chain right here. And there's one on each side. And you're gonna adjust it evenly on both sides to tighten that chain. And that should conclude our daily maintenance checks on the Monchero Ferox. Thank you. Okay, thank you folks for joining us here today. Uh, we covered a lot of material today on setting up uh, the Monchero controls in the cab and some maintenance issues. But by all means, uh, once we start harvest here in a few weeks, if you have questions, uh, contact your local territory manager or any one of us on the PAPE team and we'd be happy to help you uh, with setting up your machine for this harvest. And thank you again.